In this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the third and final step of cellular respiration, which we call the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So we'll wrap this up, we'll go through the final step of cellular respiration and see how all these steps that we've been talking about work together. So the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, sometimes we also just refer to this as one step and we'll shorten the name down to the ETC for the electron transport chain. So if you see ETC, that just stands for electron transport chain as well. Uh, this step is gonna use a couple of the products that we made during glycolysis and during the citric acid cycle. So we are gonna use the NADH and FADH2 that we produced during glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. And we're gonna use them to make more ATP. Remember, it's the ATP we really want from this process so that we can do things in the cell. This step is going to occur in the mitochondria, but it's not that simple. So it involves many parts of the mitochondria. The proteins we're going to use to perform the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis are part of the inner mitochondrial membrane. But the spaces on either side of the membrane also play important roles. So we're going to talk about the role of the matrix and the role of the intermembrane space as well. So before we get started looking at diagrams of what's going on, let's remind ourselves about the chemical reaction that's taking place. So again, for the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, we're going to start with our electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, that we produced during glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. We're going to use those electrons, we're going to take the electrons away from them, and that will result in creating NAD plus or and FAD. And we're going to use the energy in those electrons to create ATP. We're going to make about 36 ATP in this step. In order to make the ATP, we're going to need some ADP. The only other part of this process that we need, uh, the only other thing we need to complete this process is oxygen. So we're going to put oxygen into this step, and we're going to convert it into water. And we'll, we'll look at directly how that happens. So just as a reminder, everything on the left of these arrows, that's the reactants and the substrates. Everything on the right, those are our products. And just as a reminder, we've talked about this a couple times, uh, the role of NADH and FADH2 is that they are electron carriers. The forms that end with an H those are the high energy forms that are carrying some additional electrons. When we take the electrons away and these electron carriers are now low energy, those are the NAD plus and FAD forms. And then as another reminder, ATP again is the energy carrier molecule inside cells. ATP is the high energy form like a charged up battery. ADP is the low energy form like a dead battery. All right, so let's look at what's going on with this electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Before we do, let's remind ourselves about NADH just one more time. So here I'm showing you the chemical structure of NADH. I'm showing you that it can go back and forth between these two structures, depending on if we add electrons to it and we have the NADH form, or if we take electrons away and we have the NAD plus form. So remember, NADH is just carrying two electrons. These electrons that have energy that we can use, and we're going to use that energy in the electron transport chain. And for our purposes in this class, we're going to say that FADH2 and NADH work in the exact same way. It's a little bit of a lie, but it's not important for our purposes. All right, so what's going on with the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis? So we're going to talk about two steps here. We're going to keep these two steps separate. ETC will be one step. Chemiosmosis will be the second step. Again, both steps are happening in the mitochondria. There are these proteins that are part of the inner mitochondrial membrane. They're going to be involved in the process. We're going to use the NADH or FADH2 that we made during the citric acid cycle and glycolysis. So it's coming in right here. And we're going to pay attention to the spaces. Again, the matrix is the very middle of the mitochondria. And the intermembrane space is found in between the inner and outer membranes of the mitochondria. 
So the first step, ETC, is going to involve this set of proteins over here. We'll talk about that first. And then we'll look at the chemiosmosis step, which is going to involve this protein over on the left. We'll talk about that step second. All right, so the electron transport chain. Let's think about what it is doing. So again, NADH is going to deliver electrons to this electron transport chain. NADH is going to give those electrons to a protein in the electron transport chain. So here's our NADH. It's going to drop off its electrons right here at this first protein, creating NAD plus and an H plus. That's not particularly important. We're going to take the electrons off of NADH and make NAD plus. The electrons will now be in this protein. So first step, we're dropping off those electrons. What happens once those electrons are in this protein? These electron transport chain proteins use the energy from the electrons to do work. The work they do is that they transport a hydrogen ion across the inner membrane from the matrix to the intermembrane space. So let's highlight, highlight that here. This protein, labeled number one, when it's holding those electrons it got from NADH, it grabs an H plus from the bottom, the matrix, and moves that H plus to the top into the intermembrane space. Right, so that was step two. The next step is that the protein that just used those elect the energy from those electrons uh, will pass the electrons to the next protein in the chain. So here there's this protein labeled Q that's going to help transfer electrons from the first protein in the chain to the next protein in the chain. When this next protein is holding onto the electrons, it does the same thing the first one did. It uses the energy that's in those electrons to move a hydrogen ion, an H+, from the matrix to the intermembrane space. So we have another arrow here indicating that an H+, was moved up to the intermembrane space. So that's what goes on in that next protein. Once that protein is done doing that, it gives away the electrons again. So the electrons are passed to the next protein in the chain. And that's what this protein, cytochrome C, does. It moves the electrons from this protein to the next protein in the chain. You might be able to catch on already that this next protein does the same thing that the first two proteins did. It uses the energy in the electrons to transport yet another H plus ion from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Now there are just three of those proteins that do that job. This is the last one, moving an H plus ion from the matrix to the intermembrane space. And we've reached the end of our electron transport chain. But we're not done. At this point, that protein, the one labeled number four, is holding on to electrons. It's used the energy to move an H plus, but now it has to get rid of those electrons. If it just continued to hold on to those electrons, it wouldn't be able to accept new electrons from the previous members of the chain. So it has to empty uh, itself of those extra electrons. It does that by putting the electrons onto oxygen, making water. So oxygen plus these electrons produces water. And for that reason, we call oxygen the terminal electron acceptor for the electron transport chain. So that's what's going on right here in this highlighted step. Again, we have to get rid of the electrons from somewhere, from the electron transport chain to somewhere. So we put them onto oxygen to make water. I think of the electron transport chain a little bit like a bucket brigade. So bucket brigades used to be how we would fight fires before we had pumps and hoses and things like that. So in this uh, painting, there's a fire going on back here in the background. And all these guys are lined up in a row passing buckets of water from the pump over to the fire and then dumping the water on the fire. So let me uh, frame this up for you. So I think of this pump, the source of water, as like the NADH. NADH provided electrons to our electron transport chain. Each of these guys in the line is like one of those proteins in the electron transport chain. They get the electrons from NADH, the pump, and then they pass them from one member to the other. Remember, in the electron transport chain, each one of these proteins would move a hydrogen ion into the intermembrane space. And that's not well represented in this, protein, in this painting. When the electrons, the buckets of water, 
get to the far end of the line, the last guy dumps that water on the fire. That's like the last protein in the electron transport chain that puts the electrons onto oxygen to make water. If that last guy in the chain didn't have some place to get rid of the electrons, if he didn't dump out his bucket of water, the whole line of people would stop and nothing would be able to happen. All of the processes would come to a halt. So that's why I think of the electron transport chain like one of these old time bucket brigades. So we've talked about the electron transport chain, this part right here. And the goal here was to move these hydrogen ions into this intermembrane space. So again, we took electrons from NADH, we moved them through the chain, we put them onto oxygen, and we moved all these hydrogen ions up here. So we've made a high concentration of H plus in the intermembrane space. What can we do next? The next step is chemiosmosis. So during chemiosmosis, all these hydrogen ions that are crowded in the intermembrane space want to diffuse back into the matrix. We let them diffuse through a very special channel protein called ATP synthase. And when one of these hydrogen ions moves through ATP synthase, that movement or kinetic energy is transferred into ADP to make ATP, potential energy. And that's the step that makes all the ATP that we're going to make during the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So I think of chemiosmosis sort of like a hydroelectric dam. In a hydroelectric dam, we build a dam in a river. All this water builds up behind the dam. And then we let the water flow through a pipe downhill. It'll turn a generator and that generator will make electricity that we can use at our homes. Okay. So again, this is sort of like the chemiosmosis step. Instead of a dam, we've got the, inter the inner mitochondrial mem membrane. It's caused a whole bunch of H plus ions to pile up on one side of the membrane. So we get H plus ions in the intermembrane space. And we've got the dam, the membrane. But then we put the pipe and a generator in the membrane. We use ATP synthase. So then the H plus, the piled up water, can flow through ATP synthase and turn a generator. It's part of ATP synthase. So the H plus moving through turns the generator and we make electricity. In the case of the cell, we make ATP energy that we can use other places. And then the water just continues to flow downstream, just like the H plus ions are now back in the matrix. So again, this ATP synthase molecule is like a dam or like a generator in this dam, the inner membrane. H plus has to flow through ATP synthase to get to where it wants to go downstream to where there's lower concentrations of H plus. And along the way, we use that movement to make ATP. All right, so let's look at a, a wrap up of what went on with the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. So overall, this step produces about 36 ATP molecules. This is most of the ATP that we make during cellular respiration. And to demonstrate that, I've shown here the overall chemical equation for cellular respiration. In cellular respiration, we start with glucose, our six carbon sugar, and we break it apart during glycolysis and the Krebs cycle into those six carbon dioxide molecules. We also got all those NADH and FADH2s. We brought those to the electron transport chain, made the hydrogen ion gradient, and then combined the electrons with oxygen to make water. Then we let the hydrogen ions flow back through ATP synthase into the matrix, and we make the most, most of these 38 ATP, we make 36 of those ATP during uh, the electron transport chain in chemiosmosis. So, that it wraps up our discussion of cellular respiration. I hope these videos have helped clear up the three major steps. As always, please let me know if you have any questions so I can try to answer them for you, and we'll talk again soon.